Uh, this is Vakar Alisha. I am a doctoral researcher at the Center for Applied Language Studies, University of Yavaskala, Finland. Professionally, uh, I am affiliated as a lecturer with uh, Mehran University of Engineering and Technology, Jamshur, Pakistan. In today's session, uh, we are going to talk about how to do a literature review in research articles. Actually, literature review is uh, considered as one of the most important you know, parts in our academic articles or even while doing a, a thesis or dissertation, because in most cases, our research problem and our research gap emerges from literature review. Therefore, it's very important to do it critically and reflectively. So in today's session, we will be learning about uh, what are the goals of literature review and how can we do it effectively or what are the ways to write a literature review. So basically, uh, literature review is also, you know, alternatively known as a critical review essay. So now, by the term critical review essay, you can uh, you can now understand that it's it's not something uh, very passive uh, piece of writing, but you are actively engaged with the uh, you know existing scholarship or existing scholarly work you know that has been done on a particular topic that you are trying to study. So this is actually called existing body of knowledge or literature. So this is very important that whenever you want to take any uh, research inquiry, you always need to familiarize yourself with uh, the existing literature, what has been done on the topic that you want to investigate. So this existing literature review actually, it tells us about uh, the beliefs in a certain phenomena. For example, we want to see that uh, uh, what, what are the different authors, okay, and what they what they believe about a particular topic, what are the different, you know, theoretical positions about uh, a particular topic. This is how we try to familiarize ourselves in the literature review. And whenever we want to uh, carry out a new research, a new study, now what is the ultimate goal of this new research or new knowledge uh, that either, you know, alters the beliefs which already exist in, in a particular field about a topic, or you want to further strengthen those beliefs about the topic. So you, you either want to challenge those beliefs about a topic or you further reinforce or strengthen that. So basically, uh, literature review is a synthesis, is a synthetic work. That means you synthesize the, the entire existing body of knowledge on the topic that you want to further you know, carry out in, as a part of your dissertation, as a part of your you know, uh, research process. Maybe you want to publish it. Uh, so there are two goals that we need to you know, uh, know uh, while doing a literature review. The one of the goals is to summarize the findings or claims. So literature review actually is an attempt to summarize the findings, the overall results, or claims that have emerged from prior research efforts on a specific subject. So as I said that whatever topic you are actually taking, it is not something new or, or the concept or the idea that is, that is completely uh, emerge and newly in your mind, but it, it must be, you know, uh, it, it must have been studied by somebody else as well. So in different parts of the world, people are thinking and therefore, you know, somebody of knowledge would always be found there. So you have to look at, you know, uh, different studies carried out on this particular topic in different contexts and, and try to know, uh, try to summarize the, you know, overall findings or overall claims about particular topic means what had what people are thinking and what kind of conclusions people have come up about a particular topic and then secondly you have to reach at a conclusion about how accurate and complete that knowledge is and definitely to do that um, you uh, need to have a very much you know critical insight into the body of knowledge to know means whether the knowledge that has been produced is complete is accurately produced or you think that there are some problem you look at it from a different perspective or, or you have a you know, different position or maybe some other people have different position related to the topic and therefore you want to study this topic within a different you know uh, perspective so it should present your considered judgments about what is right or wrong and what is missing in the literature so these are ultimate you know two goals of literature your literature review would help you to summarize the you know findings and the claims okay about a particular topic or it will you know help you to reach a conclusion uh, you will be in a position to you know judge whether the the work which has been done is is correct or i just is uh, you know uh, so there are some inconsistencies that you find in the work and and further you want to actually 
uh, work. And this has happened, you know, in uh, most of the scientific research. If you if you look at the natural sciences or even the social sciences, this is how the scientific body of knowledge actually you know works. For example, if you just look in the history, the Aristotelian physics, let's say that what they dominated for a long time in the Europe, and then the, the time came when. Uh, the Aristotelian, you know, physics was revisited, and there were some inconsistencies in his work, which were found later by, you know, different, uh, you know, scientists in the in the medieval time. There's a Copernicus revolution that took place. So now the Copernicus and and uh, and uh, Galileo and other scientists, you know, at their time, they looked at uh, the the existing you new know, body of knowledge through different lens, and at that time, uh, new knowledge or new scientific, you know. Uh, tools and uh, and and the in inventions were made actually, and that helped to look into the knowledge from a different you know perspective. So this always happens even in the social sciences as well. So you are always you know able to make judgments about the work, and and, and judgments in a way that you have to see whether the the body of knowledge is complete. Means maybe there are there are some you know lackings. There are some gaps that have been you know. Uh, not answered, they had not been addressed, and now you want to further, you know, extend that work. So basically, you know, uh, there are two functions of a literature review. Uh, literature review is uh, one of the one of the function is do you write literature review as a part of your thesis, or you write it as a part of your research article. And in in many other cases, you will see that literature reviews are actually they are standalone pieces. Uh, Sometimes it happens that maybe in your classroom you get assignments uh, to write a teacher review, okay, and submit it to the teacher. And uh, in other cases, it happens that you know most of the researchers they try to publish the literature review uh, in research journals, so, so that you know uh, they try to just uh, introduce you know different existing uh, theoretical position that uh, and methodological you know work that has been carried out on a particular topic in the field. So literature review can be published separately, okay, as a research article, and it can also be a part of your research article or your dissertation. So these are two important functions that we, we need to consider. So whenever we are doing a literature review, uh, we need to be clear that whether it is going to be part of my article or thesis, or it is going to be uh, a standalone piece. And considering that purpose, you know, you have to structure it. Now, where can we uh, get our literature review from? What are the different sources? Now, a common assumption that uh, most of the people uh, have the literature review is actually done from maybe different research articles. Yes, research articles is one of the source and that is the academic publishing is a dominant you know, source for literature review and uh, we have to refer to, and definitely when we talk about academic publishing, we have uh, articles, from reputed journals. And this is where I would emphasize that when you are doing a literature review, uh, you don't have to look for the articles which are published in predatory journals. For example, there are some journals which are non-peer reviewed and articles which are published there, that would be, you know, uh, I think that would create a problem for you because they are, they are not authentic knowledge. They are not authentic pieces and uh, you cannot actually get to know uh, whether the knowledge which is in the article is correct or not. So therefore you have to avoid reading, you know, or, or citing uh, those papers in the literature review, which are non peer reviewed. So I would always, you know, recommend that try to have access to the well reported journal. And then you can also uh, do literature review from thesis and dissertations and even the academic books as well, because in your field, there are, there are many thesis and dissertations being produced and there are many you know, books which are being produced. You can always refer to that. In addition to that, you can always go for the government agencies. Okay, uh, maybe in your country there are there are different you know government uh, government bodies and uh, they are related with your work. For example, let's say if you want to talk about environmentalism, any environmental issue, maybe there are some governmental environmental bodies and uh, who are doing work and who are publishing the reports you know annually or, or biannually. You have to you know refer to that and uh, you can quote them. Apart from that, you can also uh, see international government organizations, think tanks, non-government organizations, freelance researchers, and then also unpublished work. Maybe you think that some of the uh, leading researchers in your field, they have recently written something and they have uploaded in on particular forums, let's say academia, 
uh, ResearchGate or some other forums, but th their work is still not published. So you can also refer to that. You can also quote it. But definitely you have to uh, see how a published and unpublished work is to be cited in your literature review because there are different ways of doing that. Even freelance researchers work can be, you know, quoted, it can be cited in your work. So uh, now when uh, you are doing a literature review, you have to, you know, look at these three important points. What the literature review actually uh, does on what, what, what does it actually do and uh, and what does it identify? That, that's very important. Now, uh, what I have seen, you know, most of the researchers, what they do, uh, when they are doing literature review, they just, you know, refer to individual separate studies and, uh, and in each paragraph, they, you know, write down about each study separately, okay? But that is not the way of doing literature review, okay? For example, if I have studies five research papers, and I am just summarizing each paper in each paragraph, that may not be a good literature review. A good literature review is the one that looks at these three important points that uh, uh, are mentioned here. For example, a good literature review, it will always help you identify the areas of uh, consensus or near consensus about the subject or topic. So doing a literature review, uh, while doing a literature review, you need to see that what is the agreement uh, what kind of, who are the researchers, who are the writers, okay, they have agreement on a particular topic. So you need to identify that consensus actually among the scholars on a particular topic that you are investigating. Uh, for example, and, and that consensus can be identified in many ways. For example, maybe you are looking at a topic uh, from a particular, you know, theoretical point of view. And Within a, that theoretical point of view, you will see that there are uh, several researchers, okay, and they have the agreement here, and they are looking at this particular, you know, topic within that particular theoretical position. So you have to identify that. So while writing a literature review, instead of going, you know, one by one with each article, you simply try to bring that consensus of, you know, the research researchers on a particular topic, for example, you can say that these and these scholars, okay, uh, using this particular method or particular theory, they propose that, okay, now what they propose, what they have found, what kind of, you know, findings they have come up with about this particular topic within a particular theoretical position, you can always mention that. So consensus is a conventional wisdom. It's a conventional wisdom in your field. What, uh, you know, uh, what is majorly or what is commonly believed in your field about this topic. That is, you know, something about the consensus. So new research is possible based on the doubts of conventional wisdom. But now uh, it's very important that, okay, we, we do identify the conventional wisdom, the consensus, but it is not necessary that uh, consensus is something that is always uh, correct, okay? Because sometimes as a researcher, we can, uh, engage in the doubts, we can always, you know, doubt the existing body of knowledge. Maybe I look at this same conventional wisdom from a different perspective. So I can always question that and I can carry out new knowledge on this particular topic. So after, you know, identifying the consensus, uh, you have to go for the areas of disagreement or debate. Okay, on the same topic, there may be, you know, uh, uh, maybe there, there are you know, many scholars who agree on this topic within a particular you know, framework. And likewise, you will see on, on the other hand, there would be some many uh, researchers who do not agree uh, on a topic within that theoretical framework, but they are looking at different perspectives. Now, for example, uh, if we try to analyze how languages are learned, you know, there may be, you know, there are some uh, uh, cognitive scientists, they are looking at language learning process within a cognitive perspective. But on other hand, you know, the social uh, psychologist and the social, uh, social linguist, for example, they look at, you know, language learning, you know, from a very different perspective. They do not, they, they try to find limitations of the cognitive scientist who look at the language as, a, you know, completely a cognitive entity. But the social linguist or the social scientist, you know, they look at language as, as a social product, as a, as a social, you know, entity. And therefore, while learning a language, it's not only the mental you know, processes which involve language learning process, but there are also, you know, social factors that influence language learning process. So this is how, you know, we have to find out the agreements and then disagreements on a particular topic. 
So after quoting this, you know, uh, consensus, uh, body of knowledge that is that is about consensus, and then a body of knowledge is about the you know disagreements or debates about about the particular topic. Then you have to you know mention the gaps, because uh, when you are well read, when you are well familiar with uh, consensus and the disagreement, and then definitely this body of knowledge will give you the insight into the gaps. Now, gaps simply it uh, it is about questions no one has tried to answer, and this is possible when you are reading extensively, when you are trying to have a deeper look into the you know body of knowledge. There you will come to know about the questions no one has answered and a perspective no one has considered. So it's not only about the question. Besides questions, sometimes maybe there can be other possible perspectives, other, you know, theories or other, you know, ideological, you know, standpoint from which, you know, different people have not, you know, thought about it. So you can always see the perspective as well. And then body of information that no one has attempted to collect or analyze. Maybe you think that maybe within your reach, uh, there is a body of information, there's a body of knowledge that has not been you know, accumulated in, in this in particular in literature that you have reviewed. So these three steps are very much important uh, while doing a literature review. And uh, one more thing that I have mentioned here about gap is gap can be empirical, it can be theoretical and methodological as well. So sometimes it happens that you know there is enough theoretical stuff Okay, on a particular topic, but uh, it, it it doesn't actually have any kind of empirical data. So within that theoretical perspective, you try to collect empirical data, and and sometimes it happens that you have empirical data available, but it has not been theorized. So based on that empirical data, okay, that has been written, that has been collected by different researchers. Now you can theorize actually. So uh, maybe it can be a new emerging theory or you have different theories in, in uh, different disciplines, but now you want to you know, bring that theory to your field and you want to interpret, you want to analyze those findings in the light of that, that theory particularly. And sometimes specific methodologies have not tried to analyze certain issues. So maybe there, there is still, you, know, you, you find that some specific method, methodologies do exist in other disciplines and uh, we can also, you know, look at our, you know, look at this topic within within that, you know, methodological framework. You can also bring in that. So these are, you know, uh, important points while doing a literature review. Uh, it it is actually all about a practice. It needs, uh, uh, you know, more in depth reading of uh, the body of knowledge that has been conducted in your field on your topic. The more you read, the more you will be able to critically, you know, reflect on what has been done and what are the disagreements, what is the agreement, you know, among, among scholars and what further needs to be carried out. So I would say in the end that uh, this is not a piece of cake. It, is, it really requires hard work. It requires, you know, your critical engagement, your active engagement with the books, with the reputed, you know, journals, and you need to keep yourself updated with the about the topic uh, what is going on in the you know uh, in your field about this topic or maybe sometime it happened that a particular topic that we want to investigate it is very interdisciplinary so we have to have a look at you know different fields different disciplines and uh, then try to you know uh, approach the topic in our inquiry maybe within within that interdisciplinary framework so thank you so much and in coming session, we will be talking about uh, theoretical and conceptual framework. So most of the people have really confusion about that. And we will try to just clear what is conceptual and the theoretical framework and how can we select about, you know, select in our study. Thank you.